how to protect your family. I'm not talking about protection of uh, comforting them. How to protect your family. Number one, focus on God and his word. I'm going to take this one in a very different phase. Focus, I'm going to talk on the word for living. This is focus, I told you, focus on what? Focus on God and his word. Every marriage will have initial challenges. I'm not talking about troubles, challenges. He said, the word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119 verse 11. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. For John has said before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. And he said, down at the right hand of the throne of God. Shout hallelujah. Always look up to God, no matter what you're going through. Because that circumstance you're going through is not permanent. It's not what? It is subject to change. If you want your family to be very successful, yes, there's no food today. It is not permanent. It's only a phase. Things are not working the way you expect them to work. It's temporal. Things will soon change. Are you hearing me? And I pray that today, no matter what your family is going through, things will turn around in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Whatever you are going through now is temporal. Is what? Don't take a permanent decision based on temporal challenge. No, sir, I want to divorce because we have no food to eat. No, sir, I'm packing out because things are not working. As long as you have Jesus, there's hope. Things will soon work as I'm speaking right now. He said they looked up to him, their faces were lighted, and they were not ashamed. You will see shame after today. He said, I lift up my eyes in the hills from whence cometh my help. He said, My help cometh from the Lord who has made heaven and earth. That you're going through challenges that don't mean help will not come. Very soon help will come your way. Say amen to that. Challenges may come, but don't allow them weigh you down. Don't give up on your marriage, don't give up on your family. Because of temporary challenges. Shout hallelujah. That is how to protect your family because you know where you're going. And if you know where you're going, you'll never be upset where you are. When you're sipping gari cassava, just see that tomorrow you're going to take salad. That is gari today, tomorrow salad. Milk was too expensive. Well, we couldn't afford milk. Where will you see milk? Since women give breast milk, man does not give. My own milk is inside me. Is that true? So I didn't bother whether there was milk. The women gave their own for children, but the man own is inside. So even if we don't take milk, we have excess milk already. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when there was no way to afford milk, we take it like that. They take the guy, they say, thank God, the one inside me, be the milk inside, in Jesus' name. You know, make life so simple that because you know where you are going. And I know your family will soon turn around. Yeah. You know what God said? 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. Look at what God said here. He said, for our light affliction, that means our light troubles, which is but for a what? A moment. Everything you're going through, we end after now. He said, what get for us far more exceeding than eternal weight of glory? Look at verse 18. That's where they give us. When we look not on the things which are seen, but on the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Yes, you are going through challenges as a family. It is subject to... That word temperament means it is subject to change. Yes, there's no food today. It is subject. It will not be like that tomorrow. That's why you came for this service because your family things will turn. Yeah. That amen is still weak. I say your family things will turn. Yeah. And your marriage things will turn. Yeah. Your husband could not afford to buy you new clothes. Your wife could not even cook good food. It will soon change. And I say to you prophetically, things will turn after now. Yeah. The louder your amen you have it done. In the name of Jesus, look at someone and say, don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your marriage. It will get better. Shout a better amen. amen. Young lady, don't give up on that young man. Things will change. Number two way to protect your family, be prayerful. Be what? Be prayerful. Be prayerful. Every family must have a prayer altar. The messages I'm taking today is not a conventional pattern. Every family must have a what? Prayer altar. 
Even if you're alone, have a prayer altar where you go to pray. Establish a specific time to pray in the morning and in the evening. In Mark chapter 14, verse 38, he said, Watch ye and pray, lest you enter into temptation. If you don't want to get into trouble, what do you do? Pray. Those who pray are never pleased to the devil. If you don't want to be a plea to the devil, then what? Pray. Luke 22, verse 40, the people said, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Pray for your spouse, pray for your children. Pray. Prayer is simply reaching out for divine assistance. Prayer is reaching out for what? Divine assistance. It is reaching out for divine help of God. You are saying, oh God, help me. That's what you mean by prayer. During strange attacks, exercise your divine authority by prayer. See, the name of Jesus, Satan, you can't attack my family. Get out of this place. He has given us power to tread upon surface and what? And not teach your enemies hurt us. So when the devil tried to attack your family, you rise up in prayer and say, Satan, take your hands off this family. In the name of Jesus. That's why you need to pray. You need to what? Constantly, because Satan is against anything good. Please have that at the back of your mind. Whatever is good incenses the devil. It gets angry and you know marriage is good. You know because if two of you should pray as touching what? He knows that God will answer. So he comes against you. You to go against him in prayer. So in the name of the devil, when he knows you're on the offensive, he will leave you alone and he will leave you alone from today. <laughs> That's why you must be prayerful. Number one, focus on God. No matter what you are going through, number two, be prayerful. Number three, walk in love. W A L K. Walk in love. Walk in love. Now, hear this. Every challenge is common. Is what? What you are trying to say you want to get out for is common. God said it's common. Is what? So, until you commonize it. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, shall we read together? One to go. There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. The thing that's trying to make you say you want to throw in the towel in your marriage, he said, is common. Is what? Until you see it like that, you may think it's a big buster. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able? So whatever you are going through, God knows you are able. But with temptation, also make aware of what? That you may be able to bear it. So no matter the temptation, God says you have the capacity to handle it. So here, tell yourself that challenge is not beyond me. When you love, you don't see what people see. Because when you love, you care. When you love, you forgive easily. When you love, you listen. When you love, you are humble. Now hear this. In my deep studies, I got a deep revelation. How come Abraham never worried about Sarah's barrenness for one day? It was even Sarah that bothered about her condition, that told him, at my state, now sleep with my housemate. But not Abraham never said, look, I'm going to divorce you today. You've not given me a child. But in today's Christianity, many divorce, even when they go through such challenges. They say, I've married her for 15 years. So now I'm divorcing her. So you wonder where did he understand love from? He said, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? When you walk in love, what people bother about does not move you. Let's understand what I'm saying here. Understand what love. Even Abraham would have been moved. He would have said, with the way I'm serving God, say that, you must go. But the Bible said, he never even bothered of such. Why? He understood 
love. You understood what? He said this thing is common. When you love, things don't bother you. And when you love, you respect. You do what? Respect. Yeah, this. Love does not discuss problems. Love discuss solutions. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12, shall we read together one to go? Hatred stirred up stripes, but love covered all sins. Shout hallelujah. When you read that scripture, it's not saying that you condone sin. It, please understand the Bible, it's not saying so. It's God not saying that you condone what? That's not what he's saying. It simply says, stop talking about the weakness of your husband or wife. Help your spouse. That's it. Stop talking about the weakness of the person. Help the person. Now, I'm going to tell you what the Bible is saying. Stop talking about the weakness of your spouse. Stop talking about the weakness of your husband. Help your husband. Help your sister. Help your brother. Help that believer. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1, let's read together. Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such as one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself. Hold here. Least thou also be tempted. You know what he's saying? Underline the word considering thyself. I'm going to break out something there. You that is condemning everybody, Consider where you're coming from. You were not like this before. You were also somebody who was weak that grew to this point. True? So why are you not judging everybody? He said, consider yourself senior judge of the church. He said, consider yourself that you two went through a level and you shifted to this point. So, help the person too. You were not that level before. Hello. Every time you come, judgment, 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 condemn, 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 condemn. My friend, learn to lift people. Learn to help people. I've not seen one judgmental Christian people get attracted to, not one. Some people repel people. Some people say that. You can correct somebody in love, I think, you know, and the person will even be happy. Thank you for helping me. You know why most of us were not born again? It was the former kind of preaching. The moment they see you with one girl, as you're strolling, they say, All of you who are holding girlfriends, you go to hell. We say, We'll go. <laughs> we go, go. And they're preaching that thing because they saw you. And we're in Egypt, they say, all of you who are now holy, okay, we say, we'll go, go, hell, we'll go. <laughs> but there came a time people understood that that's not the best way to preach. They said, for God so love you, do you know even in the midst of your sin, he loves you. You, not, you are the one who now becomes sober and leave the game. Because the man showed you love instead of judgment. So he said, you that is so, bring yourself down and help the person. Your wife is not doing the way you want. Stop judging her. Help her. Your husband is doing the way he wants. Stop judging him. Help him. So I hear. Because when you walk in love, you want to help the person where the person is weak. So I hear. Is someone get what I'm saying now? Reproof with sensitivity. When you walk in love, you don't find faults. You don't find what? You find solution. And hear this. Love not expressed will die. Any love you don't express will do what? Die. Experiment has shown scientifically that babies will die if they do not receive touching and loving affection. That's why when they give the baby, they put the baby on the mother's chest. Why did they put do that? Why did they allow even the, even the child in the incubator? When the child gets to a point, they say, Mother, go and just see the child. Because they know touch has life. Touch what? So reach out with a touch. Oh. 
hug your spouse. Don't be too spiritual. Hello. Without a touch, it will die. Hmm? Give expression to your love. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Never say, he knows I love him. She knows I love him. No, no, no. Say it. Write it. Flower it. <laughs> say it to her. Say it to him. I love you. Don't say he knows. No, no, no. Say it. Write it. Text it. And flower it. <laughs> Carry flower in that other part of the world. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. What works in one place may not work in another place, but flower it. Do you know why? Love talk brings excitement in every relationship. When you talk about love, with, you find out that you get excited. <laughs> now listen carefully. Have you ever been in a relationship and then you find out that before you got married, you were excited to talk with your husband or wife or love talk. Two of you will be very excited. It brings excitement. It brings what? Excitement. Shout hallelujah. Be kind to one another. Be kind to one another. That's all about love. Ephesians 4.32. And be kind to one another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave you. Shout hallelujah. That's New King James. The Bible says, forgive me. First Corinthians 13 verse 4. The New King James says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parry itself. It's not puffed up. Shout hallelujah. When you love, you will see the practical traits of them in your life. Any man who talks negatively about his wife never loves her. Any woman who keeps talking about my husband, my husband, you never love. Love makes you help the person. Shout hallelujah. Even where the person is. Hmm? Number four. Where to protect your family. Number four, where to protect your family. Talk about money together. <laughs> Talk about what? Uh, you know, you don't pretend. Talk about money. Pretend. If all this love we are talking, you don't talk about money. You know what? Remember, no finance, no romance. No finance? So talk about money. Talk about, two of you talk about money. You know what? Money is a good communicator. Without money, you can't buy gifts. Don't pretend. You can't even give gifts. You see something you like, you remove your face. If money is a good. So talk about money. Do you talk about money? <laughs> money is a good. Don't Be honest in your financial dealings. This honesty destroys. This honesty what? And Ananias and Sapphira were not honest as a family in their financial dealings in Acts chapter 5, and they died. Integrity matters. Don't get contract and don't pay complete tight. Your family will crash. Be careful. Be what? Don't hide. Make sure two of you sow. If the husband is a giver and the wife is not a giver, she will always pressurize him. If the wife is a giver, and the husband is not a giver, the husband will be dependent on the wife. Two of you must be givers. It's not a one-sided affair. The entire family must talk money matters. So here. Finally, make the word of God your standard for living. They're not the same. First one, I say focus on the word. Second, make the word of God your standard for living. Build your marriage on God's word. Build your marriage on what? God's word. The word of God establishes the responsibility of the husband, wife, and the children. Are you hearing me now? The Bible is the master standard for living. The Bible. If you read Ephesians chapter 5, 25, 22, 24. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved what? The church and give himself for it. You see the, this standard? 
22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. And unto what? The Lord. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands. And what? Everything. Titus chapter 2, 4 and 5. It said that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their what? Children. Most of us say love. Women always believe that it's only this side. No, both sides have to love them. Read the Bible. To be discreet, chaste, keep us at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be what? That's right. Let me say this. Never betray the confidence of your spouse on confidential matters shared with you. Shout hallelujah. 